The smart contracts for the liquidity pools where the trading is actually done is a pair of two tokens, one of them that usually has an established value and the other one that's a new token in this case. So the most established coin on the Binance Smart Chain is BNB. So that's what these are paired with. And the price is determined based off of how the ratio was when it was initially set up. And that creates something called the constant product, which is the quantity of token A times the quantity of token B. And then as you swap your token for the other token in the pool, the constant product is calculated so that the output tokens will create the same constant product in the end. Long story short, when you take some tokens out, that token's value increases because there are less of them and vice versa. So the LP tokens, when you go to the pancake swap interface, the next tab over is liquidity and you can add liquidity. And what you're adding is an equal value of US dollars in the two tokens that are in the liquidity pool. And then by doing that, you're not actually changing the price of the token at all. You're just strengthening its resistance to fluctuate, basically. And you receive in exchange for that something called an LP token, a liquidity pool token. And you get back your original investment when you put those back in there. But basically that swap and liquefy, whenever you hear these different tokens advertising automatic liquidity and, you know, we're adding liquidity to the pool, there's two fees that are attributed on most of these transactions for these kinds of coins. Usually half the fee goes back to the token holders as a reward. And the other half of the fee is for adding liquidity. And I put that in quotes because what they're doing is they're waiting until a certain number is in the contract from the fee, collecting from the fee, and they swap half of it and they get BNB back in this case. So now they're holding half tokens that are BNB and half of the original tokens, and then they put them both back into the pool. And that transaction right there, just that last one is balanced. You're putting two equal value amounts into the pool. But because they took the tokens and swapped them for the BNB, and then just put that same BNB right back in there, in the end, the net result is only adding the one token. They're not actually adding value, they're adding quantity. You're adding more of one token. And so in the end, there's no extra value. There's just extra tokens that are worth less money each. And then those liquidity pool tokens from there, by default, go back to the contract owner. So in a contract that does not have revoked ownership, those are going back to whoever deployed it. And that's a developer's private wallet. So in the moon coins where the developers hold the liquidity pool tokens after liquidity is added, yes, they hold in some cases more than half of all the liquidity pool tokens. And what they're able to do is swap those out, pull out a substantial substantial amount of the token and the paired established value token. And then they can take the half that was the token and immediately swap it back out for whatever's left in there. And what happens real quick, this is another reason that it's good to add liquidity to the pool because it spreads out who is in control of the liquidity pool tokens. You're decentralizing who controls the liquidity pool tokens. It helps in the long run because it creates a situation that is harder to pull the rug. We don't know what someone's true intentions are. We don't know what somebody really wants to do with it. All we know for sure is what the code says it can do and where the things actually are. And that's why that's been my focus on everything. And I will look and see how things are being advertised sometimes with people, but I don't call them out on their intentions and things because I don't truly know what they are. I just look at what's happening and what can happen and talk about that.